Welcome to another video in this series about automating management of a swimming pool water level using the ESP32. In this video I'm going to cover off two things. The first is making the water level sensor wires replaceable and the second is a walkthrough of the software. I'll put chapter markers in the video so you can skip to the parts that you want to watch. Let's talk about the replaceable sensor wires. After about six months, the anode wire broke off due to corrosion. Fortunately, there is still a mechanical water level management device on the end of the hose, so even though the electronic management failed, the pool didn't get overfilled. My original prototype just had wires soldered to the board directly, making them really hard to replace. The upgraded version has a terminal block inside a waterproof plastic box, so that replacement is now easy. Right, so let's talk about the software. The original software that I wrote in part 7 did a great job of keeping the pool topped up through the summer where it was hot and dry. The only thing I didn't like about it was that it didn't give me any feedback to let me know that it was working. The new software takes advantage of ESP32 related features and the multitasking and the Wi-Fi reconnect that we covered off in part 4. It connects to the house Wi-Fi and sends status emails. Each time the pool filling process starts or stops, I get an email that tells me what's going on, and it also shows detail about which of the sensors are in the water or not. If the pool water level is too high, I get a special email that lets me know that I need to empty the pool. It's been raining quite a bit lately, so you can see I've had to empty the pool a few times. In the video description, I'll publish this link to the code which is in GitHub if anyone wants it. I'm not going to go deep into all the details of the code, but I will give it an overview. If you've got particular questions, leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer. There are some includes at the top that are needed to make the thing work for doing Wi-Fi connection and emailing, etc. To be able to connect to the Wi-Fi, you need to put in your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password. If you connect successfully, the Wi-Fi status LED will flash initially while trying to connect and then go solid when it's connected. Once we've got the Wi-Fi set up, the next thing we need to do is deal with the email settings. I'm using a Microsoft Office 365 email um, account and connecting using port 587. You have to specify the email account that you're going to be using for sending from and you need to obviously have the password for that account which you put in here. The sender name shows up and when you're sending the email, but it doesn't really make this thing work or not. The, the author domain doesn't seem to really matter that much. Um, this is going to be the name of the person you're sending to, but the most important thing, I guess, is the actual email address that you're going to send your uh, status emails to. The code I actually use for sending the emails, I got that from randomnerdtutorials.com. I'll post this URL in the video description, but it's got a really good explanation of what you need to install and how the code works, etc. The code uses two tasks for multitasking. There is the Wi-Fi Keep Alive task, which is very similar to the same code that I had in video four with the Wi-Fi Automatic Reconnect. And then the other task is the pool monitoring water level task, and that is similar to what we had in video seven, but it also includes extra code now for logging the status of the um, each sensor, whether it's in, in the water or not, and for sending the extra email related to when we've got a very high water level. So um, if you've got any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment, but otherwise I think that's it, and thanks very much for watching.